On today's show, Tesla has its worst quarter ever and admits Model 3 production ramp-ups are several months behind schedule. Toyota looks to airless tyres to help it develop fuel-efficient cars. And why we're only four years away from fully autonomous cars on our roads, at least according to NVIDIA. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. We're starting today's show with the biggest news story of the week, Tesla's official Q3 2017 earnings, which were released on Wednesday afternoon after the close of markets. As suspected, Tesla had an extremely tough third quarter, failing to meet its production and delivery targets for Model 3. Despite celebrating the delivery of its quarter millionth electric vehicle since the Model S launched in 2012, as well as enjoying continued record demand for Model S and Model X, up about 18% on Q2 this year, Q3's losses represented the largest Tesla had ever experienced, by a very long way. How large? Well, in Q2 this year, Tesla had losses of $336 million. In Q3, that had grown to $671 million, almost but not quite double the previous quarter's losses. In anyone's books, that's a lot of money and not far off the $888 million the company lost in total during last year. Some of that is down to Model 3, which has proven extremely costly for Tesla to produce. A sleep-deprived, cold-ridden Elon Musk took to the earnings call late on Wednesday to confirm that a large factor in the slow Model 3 ramp-up was problems at Tesla's Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada, where Tesla engineers were left no option but to recode third-party robotic production lines where battery cells are packaged together to produce Model 3 battery packs. Musk, who's been sleeping at the Gigafactory in order to lend a hand in solving the bottleneck issues, admitted that it's been extremely depressing for him over the past few weeks, referring to the situation as ninth level hell. Now he joked Tesla is at eighth level hell and daylight can be seen. But with $22 billion in liabilities, Tesla needs to do everything it possibly can to turn itself around and bring the Model 3 to market as soon as it can. And with Musk clearly fuming about the reporting of the 700 recent firings at the company, something Musk maintains was influenced only by performance reviews, nothing more, I can only imagine the stress levels for anyone working at Tesla right now. Pass the antacid, please. To slightly nicer thoughts now, courtesy of a new study released this week from VUB University Brussels Transport and Environment that shows that even in Germany and Poland, where power grid mixes are the dirtiest of any EU country, driving an electric car is still better for the environment than driving a diesel-powered car. Using a well-to-wheel analysis that factored in the manufacturing and lifespan of vehicles, the study showed that even in Poland, where electricity is the dirtiest of any European nation, electric vehicles vehicles powered by the local power mix were responsible for 25% less emissions in their lifetime than a modern diesel vehicle, with that figure growing to 85% less for vehicles powered by Sweden's power grid, the cleanest in the EU. So the next time someone says that EVs are dirtier than ICE vehicles, be sure to show them this survey. Tesla might be busy promoting its autopilot semi-autonomous driver assistance technology and doing rather well selling customers a full upgrade to level 5 autonomy whenever that becomes available in the future, but it turns out that level 3 semi-autonomous driver assistance features, as found in all of Tesla's vehicles, won't ever be a feature in any vehicles that Waymo makes. That's because Waymo has discovered, after extensive testing, that when you give someone partial control of a vehicle, as is the case with Level 3 autonomy, people quickly lose contextual awareness. And then, when asked to take control of the vehicle again in an emergency, the driver is situationally unaware of what's really going on. And that, says Waymo, is super dangerous. And I have to agree. So onwards to full Level 5 autonomy. Last week, BMW celebrated building its 100,000th BMW i3 at the Leipzig factory where every single BMW i3 is made. Alongside the celebrations, the company officially flipped the switch on a new grid-connected battery storage farm in Leipzig that can house up to 700 BMW i3 battery packs, 
It's currently got 500 or so installed, and it helps to provide grid storage and smoothing function to the local area. At the moment, the batteries in the farm are split between new and used battery packs, but as BMW i3 packs reach the end of their life in a car, they'll be recycled into facilities like this around the world. Nice! Before our next news story, I want to remind you about Ecotricity's new price plan called Eco Wholesale, a great new energy product that makes it easier to save your wallets and the planet. Eco Wholesale links you directly to our 100% renewable wholesale prices with a small admin fee. In fact, it's now New Zealand's most affordable Carbon Zero certified electricity. There are no joining fees, no fixed term contracts, just New Zealand's most affordable way to buy power, and it could save you a massive $400 on your home electricity bill in a year, or $4,000 if you run a business. So, clever Kiwis, switch to Eco Wholesale with Ecotricity. It's the cleanest and most affordable way to charge up your home and your electric car, and it only takes a couple of minutes to join Eco Wholesale, so just follow the link in the notes below. Over the past decade or so, I've seen a huge number of different approaches from automakers trying to make cars as energy efficient as possible. But now Toyota is adding a new one to the list, airless tyres, which Toyota says are light enough to offset the weight of in-wheel motors. Debuting prototype airless tyres last week in Tokyo on its fine ride concept fuel cell car, Toyota says it's dead serious about making airless tyres a thing of the future, and says it should have a product ready for prime time by 2020, which is about the same time frame as is expected to launch its solid state battery pack for electric cars. Interesting. Now that it's proven how advanced its autonomous vehicle technology is on the closed circuits of M-City in Michigan, Detroit, Ford confirmed this week that it's ready to kick its Level 5 autonomous vehicle test program up a gear by introducing fleets of self-driving vehicles to various cities next year. Ford made the announcement during its own quarterly earnings call this week, at which it also confirmed that it's busy working with undisclosed companies on developing a ride-sharing, ride-hailing service for autonomous vehicles that will be coming to market in the not-too-distant future, think 2020 or thereabouts. Despite massive expansion into the electric vehicle market around the world, especially in its home market of China, BYD announced this week that it expects its annual profit to fall by one-fifth this year due to increased competition in the electric vehicle market. The BYD, one of the first Chinese firms to work on highway-capable electric vehicles, has always enjoyed a position of power in the Chinese market, but with government subsidies for plug-in purchases being replaced by mandated electric vehicle production quotas for all automakers, BYD says it's going to lose out, at least in the short term. Still, with BYD pushing its electric bus programs outside of China, I think the company is going to continue to be a big player in the electric vehicle marketplace for many years to come. And finally, in four years, we'll have fully autonomous cars roaming our roads. At least, that's the opinion of NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, who said late last week that artificial intelligence advances would make fully autonomous Level 5 cars entirely possible within just four years. But while the technology may have reached the age of maturity by then, it's unlikely that we'll see any kind of advancement in the legislative space when it comes to autonomous cars on the public highway. After all, consider how long it's taken electric cars to get anywhere near a grasp on mainstream, and that's with very little governmental involvement worldwide. Yes, autonomous cars may be road legal in four years' time or shortly thereafter, but don't expect them to be completely taking over anytime soon. And with that, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the moment a new show is uploaded. But in the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.